right, three things in life are certain, death, taxes, and this man Vegeta never catching a break. From the moment I watched Android 18 lift him up with her finger and then palm him into the side of a mountain, I just knew that Toriyama was in that writer's booth giggling and kicking his feet anytime he got to inflict pain on the Prince of All Saiyans. Like they really had him take back shots while the others watched, I am appalled. But at the beginning of the boo arc, Babidi ends up taking control of his mind and finally giving us Majin Vegeta. But before we continue, I should mention that he kind of just left Let's Bobbity take control, and only did this for the power boost so he could fight Goku. So when he, Goku, Gohan, and Shin all get sent to the World Martial Arts Tournament, he straight up refuses one of Bobbity's commands, then sends out a Ki Blast that knocks away Goku and destroys half of the stadium, if not the entire city. Hundreds, if not thousands of people got evaporated in a single moment. I have never seen someone get a power boost and then decide to become a domestic terrorist. There is no way. Anyways, the rest of the spectators in the stadium, who for some reason have stopped running for their lives, start cheering on Mr. Satan and telling him to go fight Vegeta. But he doesn't even glance his way, oh my god. Mr. Satan gets ground on in front of this entire crowd, I would have just went home after this. Goku flies down and realizes that Vegeta let himself become a slave to Babidi, and he responds by raising his arm and obliterating another section of the stadium, and in the smoking chaos of it all? He says, tell me, is it slavery when you get what you want? Alright man, I heard all I needed to hear. He really became evil again, caused unimaginable destruction to the city, then decided to drop one of the most iconic lines in Dragon Ball. But I don't even blame the Supreme Kai for getting in between them like this. The reason Boo was revived so quickly was because of Vegeta wanting to fight Goku so bad. So many bad things happened because Vegeta couldn't have waited 15 more minutes for Gohan to finish off Debora. Boo turned Chi into an egg and then stomped on her. He blew up the earth! Anyways, after getting threatened by Goku and realizing he's not built for this, Shin and Gohan sneak into Babidi's ship to try and stop him. And we see Goku dodging all of these punches before he eats a knee to the stomach and an elbow from Vegeta. And then he drops another knee all the way from the sky. Do you know how much hate in your heart you have to have to drop a flying knee on someone? As the battle rages on, Vegeta ends up tossing Goku into the wall and trapping him with these rings, before putting on what I can consider to be the most disrespectful moment I have ever seen in anime. He says what's the matter, getting pieced up by a man with a receding hairline? Then he starts monologuing while giving him the craziest combo I have ever seen in my life. I mean this is insane, can you believe this Piccolo? Piccolo? All right, but as this is going on, Gohan and Shin eventually reach Boo's cocoon to destroy it. And look at these two little gremlins step out from behind it like they are super villains. You guys are not main characters, I'm sorry. Like you could be walking down the street and I mean, I would notice the little goblin that has a few untrimmed ball hairs on the top of his head. But well, you get my point, right? These two are getting no merchandise sales, no revenue from the Dragon Ball franchise. You guys are bums, I am not apologizing. Eventually the cocoon pops open, and out comes this pink, fat, ugly, nasty little creature, Majin Buu. Well, I can't even say little. That is an eight foot tall baby in the shape of Patrick Star. Even Deborah is like, is, is that it? That's the guy we should be afraid of? What's he gonna do, sit on us? Babidi starts issuing commands to him and Boo just does not care at all. There is not a single thought behind those eyes. And I just need to say, this has gotta be the third time in the arc that Babidi has issued a command to one of his minions and they just ignore him. This dude is a loser, I cannot believe it! Get him out of here! Deborah goes up to him and says, Aw, what a little cutie, do you need to go back to your mama? And Boo just pokes this man in the eyes dodges his punch and then roundhouse kicks him and sends him flying across the desert. Look at him! Oh my god! Gohan, Goku, and even Vegeta feel this new surge in power. And after getting some sense knocked into him, Vegeta tells Kakarot that until they kill this new threat, their battle is over. But as they're about to depart for Boo, he knocks Goku out and steals a Senzu beam before going to do it himself. Now I'm not gonna lie, I expected him to get packed up like Deborah and eaten like a cookie, but he started cooking here. He shows up to the battlefield 
battlefield, destroys Bobbity's spaceship, then starts putting in the work against Boo. He drags his fist along the ground, then uppercuts this man upside his head to the point he goes flying through the clouds, then delivers the coldest double axe handle I have ever seen in my life before Boo goes crashing into the ground. Stay still, let me take your picture there, big man. This is going on YouTube, Instagram, I may even post you one of those sped up TikTok remixes. Vegeta pulls out all the stops here. He starts spamming gombos. He shoots a hole through Boo with this energy blast. I really thought he was about to pack up Boo with no help whatsoever. But then, when this little fat man started laughing, yeah, I knew it was over. <laughs> How are you going to get a Kakyoin and also Rengoku shaped hole in your fat stomach and then laugh it off? I would have left right there. I would have gone home. God, I wish Vegeta went home. But I seem to have forgotten about his pride. Pride that led him to sacrifice himself for the others. Only for Boo to come back in the next episode? I am sick. Toriyama, you are an evil man.